the plays. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Greetings, 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 and welcome to this teleconference. God bless you for joining us today. Another time we are here to look into the Word of God. We want to give God thanks and praise for His loving kindness, His tender mercies towards us. And today we want to look into the Word of God and today we want to look at Psalm 91. For Psalm 91, <coughs> before, before I read the Psalm, I'm going to have a prayer. Father, I thank you, praise you, bless your name, worship you, glorify you. Thank you for loving kindness. Thank you for your tender mercies towards us. Thank you for this moment that we're able to call upon your name. Your name is only, your, la your name alone is wonderful. Your name alone is great. Your name alone is mighty. Thank you for your love. Pray you lead us, guide us, <coughs> give us victory, victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So today we want to look at Psalm 91. And <coughs> I'm going to read Psalm 91. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrows, the arrow that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction. that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because he has made the Lord which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, young lion and dragon, shalt thou trample on the feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. So here we have the psalmist declaring the power of God to protect and to keep. And um, this psalm is a very, very powerful psalm. Very powerful psalm indeed. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of of the Almighty. What is the secret place of the Most High? What is the secret place of the Most High? 
the secret place of the Most High is when we walk with God, when we talk with God, when we have a communion with God, when we have a relationship with God, when we have God, God become our friend, God become our Lord, God become our Savior, God become our Father. As the psalmist says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So God become all these things to us. When we reach the place and we understand that without God, we dare not live. And without God, we dare not die. We need God. When we are at such a place in our mind and in our heart, our understanding of God, we will, we will be dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. The secret place of the Most High is having a good understanding of who God is. A good understanding of how He cares for us. A good understanding how He, His love, His mercy, His grace surrounding us. A good understanding of His protection towards us. A good understanding of how He provides for us. And then when we have this understanding, we dwell, we be dwelling. We will be dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. And when we are with this understanding of our relationship with God, it says, He shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So when we have this understanding of who God is and what He means to us, and how great is His love, His mercy, His grace towards us. When we understand that, then we shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And if we are under the shadow of the Almighty, it means that we have Almighty protection. Almighty protection from all fears, from all cares, from all dangers, we have almighty protection when we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It's a comforting thing that when we realize how many of the patriots and the prophets who have been through so many things, so many danger, so many toils, so many snares, and so many things has happened to the patriots and prophets because they abide under the shadow of the Almighty. But we see that God protected them. They were under divine protection. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. He, I will say, of the Lord, Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. Do you know sometimes we need a refuge? Sometimes we need a fortress. Songwriter says, I am weak, but thou art strong. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Sometimes we need a refuge. We need somewhere to hide. And only God can hide us from dangers of life. He only He can be a fortress, a bulwark, something to protect us against every form of evil. But it says, my God, my God, in Him will I trust. In Him will I trust. 
we can't put our trust in man because the arm of men would fail us and we dare not trust our own. So it says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. And we only can trust in God when we have already proved what He can do. And with some way we have to prove the power of God to deliver. We have to somewhere along in our life have to prove the power of God to save. Somewhere in our life we have to prove the power of God to heal. And we have to prove the power of God to give us victory. The power is there. The power is there. The psalmist said, my God, in him will I trust. Whatever it may be. Whatever the situation may be. I will trust in the Lord. I will stand up on his word. I will lean upon his promise because he's a God who will never fail. So when we we should have this attitude of comfort in the Lord, we should be have that attitude of understanding of what God can do and how he is able to heal, how he is able to deliver, how he is able to provide. All we need is in Jesus. Verse 3 says, Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. So the snare of the fowler is when there's danger lurking around us. When there's dangers at our doorsteps and we don't know it. When there's danger around the corner and we don't know it. When there's some danger along our pathway and we don't know it. That is the snare of the fowler. But it says, surely he shall deliver me for deliver, surely shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence awful pestilence evil evil doers evil intentions he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence for every form of evil he is able to deliver us. Surely He will. Surely He must. From we are born, God's protection is around us. God's power to deliver, God's power to heal, God's power to lift up in every situation, God's power to exalt and lift up his children who put their trust in him. Now the psalmist said, my God in him will I trust. Because the psalmist knew that he trusted in the Lord. He knew that God cannot fail anyone who put their trust in him. And so he was sure that no matter what it was, he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, and from the noisome pestilence. Oh, he shall deliver thee. My God, he is a great deliverer. And he went on to say, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. The Lord the Almighty God shall cover us with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. You know, they have, they have a certain bird that comes to, to take little, little bird, little um, chickens 
um, like they, they call them chicken hawk they come and pick up little chickens and when the mother of the chickens see the hawk surrounding and circling he bring all this chicken together and cover them under her wings so the hawk cannot take them away so the love of God is the same with us that he when he sees danger when God sees danger he will cover us with his feathers he will put us under his wings so that no danger can befall us that's the divine protection and it's so good to know that we have such a divine protection. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. His truth. The truth of God is powerful. If we keep the truth in our heart, we also keep God because He is truth. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is truth. So we keep the truth of God, we're keeping God in our heart. And through that truth that we keep, that truth shall be our shield and our buckler. Our shield and as our sword, we are there being protected by the power of Almighty God. He will cover thee with his feathers cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and thy butler and he went on to say verse 5 Psalm 91 verse 5 thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flyeth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Thou shalt not be afraid. The word of God promised to protect us. Thou shalt not be afraid when we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the hour that fly by day. So, danger don't come only at night, but danger come by day. They shall, we shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the hour that fly by noonday. Nothing that the devil planned for us will succeed. Bible says no weapon that form against us shall prosper. It says no the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasted at noonday. We shall not be afraid of anything. We shall not be afraid of nothing when we have God on our side if God be for us who can be against us who songwriter says tell me who can stand before us when we go in Jesus name no one no one can stand before us thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night nor for the hour that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. We should not be afraid at all when we trust in the Lord. When we put our trust in the Lord, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. As a, this is powerful, this is powerful, this is awesome. It's great to know that we can live a life without fear when we know the Lord, when we serve the Lord. 
when we acknowledge the Lord as our Savior, as our King, He says, A thousand, a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. A thousand. So with the grace of God, the power of God, we can slay a thousand. The book says that Samuel Samson slay one thousand. Philistine all by himself with the jawbone of an ass. The word of God can't be wrong. One thousand Philistine was slain by Samson with the jawbone of an ass. And the birds say, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But they shall not come nigh thee. They shall not come nigh thee. They shall not approach thee. They shall not touch thee. They shall not harm thee. A thousand at thy side and ten thousand at thy right and they shall not come nigh thee because God said so and in verse 8 it says only with thine eyes only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked yes so the wicked shall be rewarded for their wickedness and the seed they sow shall be, they shall reap. If they sow bitterness, they shall reap bitterness. If they sow evil, they shall reap evil. If they sow war, they shall reap war. Only with thine eyes shall thou see. Behold and see the reward of the wicked. The wicked shall be rewarded. We don't have to worry about wicked people. We don't have to worry about wickedness of man. We don't have to worry about that. God have all that covered. Every wicked man shall be rewarded. He said, we will see with our eyes the reward, what God give to the wicked, because the wages of sin is death. And the gift of life, God is eternal life. So there is a wage. There is a reward for the wicked. And God shall surely reward the wicked for their wickedness. He shall. And he says, with our eyes, we shall behold and see those who serve God and those who serve him not. It says in verse 9, Because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge. Because. Because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge. Even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Oh praise God. How wonderful. Because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge. We have made the Lord our refuge. When we have made the Lord our refuge and make the Most High, the Lord Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lords of Lords, make Him our habitation. When we love the Lord and serve the Lord, It says, there shall no evil, no evil before thee, no evil, no evil. And it says, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. What a divine protection. This psalm, Psalm 91, is a powerful psalm. And it shows us the protection that God put over his people. The divine protection. He cover us, he says, under his wings. Shall he hide under his feathers, under his wings. 
we under the mighty wings. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. If you make the Lord because of me, because thou hast made the Lord my re which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil, no evil befall thee, no evil. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For why and how? It says in verse 11, For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. God Almighty will dispatch his angel and they will take charge over our affairs, over our go incoming, ingoing and outgoing. Our coming in and our going out. He will give his angels charge over us to protect us in every way and every corner, night and day. He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, to keep us in all our ways. That's what, that's what God has done. He put his angels in charge over us so that no evil can befall upon us. He says, they shall bear thee up with their hands. Please thou dash thy foot against the stone. The angels shall bear us up with their hands. In other words, if we are falling, the angels will catch us and save us. Anywhere the danger is, the angel of God which is charged over us will cancel those dangers. They shall build thee up with their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. See what God is protective of us. We're not even to have our feet knock against a stone. That's the power of the protection. That's the divine protection. Not even a stone. Nothing hard. That's the love of God. To protect his own. What a great love. Such love. Such wondrous love. Mighty love of God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It says, Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and dragon shalt thou trample on the feet. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. Just imagine that God has given us power to tread upon lion and adder. Adder is a venerable small snake. And the lion, we know the lion is the king of the jungle. But they have no power over the word of God. They are subdued with the word of God. They cannot harm us. They cannot endanger us. When we are under the shadow of the Almighty. We are protected. You, thou shalt tread Step on the lion, step on the other, tread upon the lion, tread upon the other. The venomous snake, we will not be fearful because God's protection is greater than anything that we can think of. It says the young lion and the, the young lion and dragon. Imagine even the dragon. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample on the feet. What power God has given us. But then when we think about it, when God created man, God gave man dominion over every beast of the field, including the lion and the dragon. God gave man power, authority 
over every creature that is on the land. So he, sh he surely committed that the young lion and the dragon, his people, we his children, shall trample them on the feet, fearless. What a thing that we can be fearless with all these things, all the dangers of this world. No matter what form they come, no matter what shape they come, they come by day, they come by night. Whatever it is, there's no danger that God cannot cancel and God cannot turn away because He's Lord. He's the all-powerful God. He is the creator of all things. And so we have a confidence. If we abide, He that dwelleth, if we dwell in the secret place of the Most High, we shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So here it goes now in verse 14. G, the Bible says, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. So because we have set our love upon the Lord, therefore, he said, the Lord will deliver us. Because he set his love upon me, because we love the Lord, and he will love us with everlasting love, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. Because we love him. Because we serve him. Therefore he said he will deliver us. And not only that, he will set us on high. He will set him on the high because he has known my name. The great name. If we think about the men of old who serve God and how God even think about Joseph in Egypt how he used brother throw him into the pit and they happened that the Ishmaelites were coming along and um, they sold him they sold their brother they sold their brother and their brother brought him down to Egypt while he was in Potiphar house, we know the story well. And he had to fight to get himself away from Potiphar's wife. And then Potiphar's wife lied unto him. And Potiphar threw Joseph in prison. And we see from prison, God used him to interpret the dream of Pharaoh. And because he interpreted the dream, then he was released from prison. And God set him up next to Pharaoh in Egypt. So God says, I will set him on high. God will set his people on high. That's what God will do because we had known his name, because we serve him, because we love him, because, we, he, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he's known my name. He shall call upon me. Look at that. In verse 15, it says, He shall call upon me and I will answer him. That's wonderful. Central is never busy. 24 sevens. Call upon the Lord. He shall call upon me and you know, we're living in a world where there's trouble. We cannot, once we are in the body, in the flesh, while we are in this flesh, there's no way we can escape trouble. Trouble will come. It doesn't matter how, how, how much we try. It doesn't matter how 
skillful we think we are, can avoid trouble, trouble will come. God knows that trouble will come. This life is a troubled life. We are sojourning. You know, we are sojourning. We are on our way to a better life, to a better hope. It says, I will be with him in trouble. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. Isn't it good to know that no matter what the situation is, we can call upon the Lord. It doesn't matter what the circumstances is. It doesn't matter what the need may be. It doesn't matter what the situation may be. He will take us. He can take us through the fire. He can take us through the water. He can take us through the flood. He can take us through anything. He said, He shall call upon me in the time of trouble. And I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. These are the words of Almighty God. These are the powerful words of Almighty God. His commitment to his people who trust him, who serve him, who obey him, who live for him. He says, I will be with him in trouble. Trouble. Everyone has trouble. There's no one who is immune of trouble. No one. There's no one on earth. No man on earth is immune from trouble. But when we know the Lord, he promised. He says, I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Oh my God. Imagine that. Imagine just that because we we set our love upon him. Just imagine if we set our love upon the Lord. If we really love the Lord and we set our love upon him. He says, because he set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. Because God knows our heart. God knows God knows when we love him. God knows if we love him. Because God knows the heart. And everything comes from the heart. Everything comes from the heart. And God deal with the heart. So God knows the heart. And once God knows that our heart is connected to his love, his mercy, his grace. He says, I will, because he set his love upon me, I will deliver him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. I will honor him. When God honor us, nothing can befall us. And he went on, the last verse, verse 16 says, with, with long life, with long life, will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. What more can we ask of God? What more can we ask of God? When David had an understanding of, of the love of God, David had an understanding of a good relationship with God, what it means. David had a good, clear understanding who God was, what God was, what God expected of us. And David, David loved the Lord. And David says, one thing have I desired and that will I seek after. Imagine above all things in the world, and with that God, that, that's how God knows. This is how God knows that we truly love Him. This is how God knows that we truly love Him. The statement that David made, One thing have I desired of the Lord. One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Everything in this world will fade away. Everything, 
everything that we see, hear, touch will fade away. But the love of God cannot fade away. It abides forever. So that is the love of God, the love of God, the love when we love God, His divine protection towards us. It's awesomely great. So he says, with long life. So he promised he would keep us. He will give us long life. Long life when he satisfy him. And then he will show us his eternal salvation. Amen. God bless you, my brethren. We come to the end of our teleconference. God bless you for joining us. And um, we all thank God for his love and mercy and his divine protection towards us and all that the Lord has done for us. Let us continue trusting in the Lord and be assured that God is with us. God will not fail us. He will protect us and we will guide us by his grace and by his power. Amen. God bless you. Um, God bless you, Pastor Winston. God bless you. Sister Rose, God bless you. I am going to close now with prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you thanks, give you praise, give you glory. Thank you for your love and mercy. Thank you for your goodness. Pray you bless us and keep us, cover us under your blood. Help us to draw near to you, Lord. Help us to submit ourselves to you. Let your grace and mercy continue to guide us and protect us. We give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you glory. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, brethren. God bless you all. God bless.